I'm sharing with you how to make this incredibly delicious flourless chocolate cake. It's rich and decadent, so you'll only want a small slice, but there's no way you'll miss the fire in this one. Welcome to Recipes by Karina, where I share with you how to make classic and simply delicious recipes. Make sure to subscribe for a new video each week. To get started on this flourless chocolate cake, in a medium sized bowl measure out your butter. We'll need two sticks, one cup or 225 grams. You'll notice they give the recipe amounts in metric and imperial, so no matter where you live in the world, the recipe should be easy enough to follow. If you'd like the full recipe for this chocolate cake, it will be on my website as well as the full measurements listed in the description box below. We're going to be melting the butter so it doesn't need to be at room temperature. Just cut it up so it isn't one large piece. In the small bowl, add in your chocolate. We want to use dark chocolate here, somewhere around 60-70% to 70 for the best flavour. Choose the best quality chocolate you can find, one that you would use for eating, not chocolate chips. Cut or break the chocolate up into small pieces just so it will melt easier. Place the bowl over a small saucepan of simmering water and stir occasionally until the chocolate and butter have completely melted together. Alternatively, you can melt the butter and chocolate together in the microwave, just make sure not to do it directly in a pot as there's too high of a chance you'll end up burning your chocolate. While the butter and chocolate is melting, get started on the eggs. You'll need 7 eggs for this recipe. Trust me, you won't get an eggy flavour at all, so don't try and cut it down to 3 eggs instead as it won't work. Make sure your eggs are at room temperature. If you store them in the fridge, just remove them about 30 minutes before you start baking. Crack each egg into a bowl. I'm going to be using my stand mixer here, but if you're using a whisk or a hand mixer, make sure to use an extra large bowl as these will be about tripling in volume so you don't want to run out of space. Every minute or so, check your butter and chocolate again, giving it a quick mix with a wooden spoon to make sure it's melting and isn't getting too hot. This chocolate cake only requires 5 ingredients, making it incredibly easy to make. It's great if you're gluten free or trying to avoid flour, but it also doesn't need the flour whatsoever, so you won't be missing it. Think of it as a very sophisticated and decadent chocolate cake, one that you can even add liqueur to if you would like. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite pairing to chocolate is. Mints, coffee, orange, vanilla, almond, there are so many different options that you can use for this recipe. When your chocolate and butter mixture is completely silky and smooth, remove it from the simmering water and leave it to cool while you work on the eggs. After you've cracked all of your eggs, next we'll need some sugar to sweeten this cake up. Measure 1 cup or 200 grams of granulated white sugar and pour it into the bowl with your eggs. Most dark chocolate won't be super sweet, so this cake does need some sugar. Have a quick taste of the melted chocolate and butter mixture and if it tastes somewhat sweet, reduce the amount of sugar you add by half a cup. Turn your mixer on to low speed first for a minute or so before turning it up to a medium high speed. If you are whisking the eggs by hand, just mix as fast as you can until the eggs and sugar have doubled to tripled in volume. This should take you about 5 minutes with a machine, or about 15 minutes by hand. Don't be afraid of doing it by hand though, if you don't have a hand mixer, it'll be a great arm workout. When your mixture is looking super light and fluffy, it's about time to add the chocolate and butter to the eggs. Test your chocolate mixture here and make sure it isn't too hot. Warm is okay, but we don't want to be cooking the eggs from the heat. Turn your mixer on a lower speed and pour out half of your melted chocolate and butter into the bowl with the machine running. Mix the batter together for a minute or so until it is completely combined before adding the remaining. 
Adding half at a time allows the mixture to combine fully without completely deflating the eggs from the heavy chocolate. You should be left with a smooth, silky and dark chocolate cake batter. Now is the time where you can add whatever kind of flavouring you would like. Some popular options would be vanilla essence, almond essence like I'm using, mint essence or maybe orange zest or your favourite liqueur. About a tablespoon of any flavouring as it needs to be strong to compete with the chocolate. Scrape down the bowl with the rubber spatula and give the batter a final mix until everything is completely combined. Pour your chocolate cake batter into a lined 8 inch cake tin which is wrapped with foil on the outside. This cake tin will need to be placed inside a larger cake tin, roasting pan or baking dish filled halfway up with boiling water. Baking it in a water bath helps the cake to bake more evenly so the outside doesn't dry out before the inside has had a chance to heat up. Place your cake in a 160 degree Celsius or 325 degree Fahrenheit oven for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, your cake will probably look completely raw in the centre. It'll still jiggle when you shake the pan. Don't worry about this, we're only cooking the eggs, so cooling it down will set the chocolate and butter, which in turn will set the cake. Cool your cake completely in the pan before transferring it to a serving plate. Wrap it in plastic wrap or place it in a container and place in the fridge for at least 6 hours or overnight before serving. Serve it straight out of the fridge, dusted with sugar and with fresh fruit, whipped cream or a berry coulis. It's incredibly rich and decadent, so you'll only want a small slice, but you'll probably be tempted by seconds. If you make this cake, I would love to see a picture. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this recipe, and I'll see you in my next video.